In this video, I'll show you how you can scrape and gather data for your project, be it to insert inside of a database, be it to generate a JSON file, or really if you just want to add the data to a CSV file to do your own analysis. And I specifically need to do this for my own website. As you can see, like it's a pretty new website, but if you go inside of GPT-5, you'll see an entire description of GPT-5, despite me using a dynamic way to gather benchmarks and performances and some overall data, like the amount of API providers it has when it was released, all of this creates the entire description, but I can't do the same for benchmarks. A description around a specific benchmark would be more about how that score is obtained, what the LLM has to go through to get to that specific score. For the GPQA benchmark, for example, if I search for it, I'll get this description of what it's about. Still, I can't just blindly copy this and paste it as a description for a GPQA. First, because it's not personalized in the way that my website might want to communicate. Then because I would be harmed SEO wise as Google would identify that it is a copy and probably wouldn't rank that specific page that has this description since archive is already much more relevant and has much more authority. And so if I were doing this manually, I'd probably either rewrite it or just send it over to ChatGPT to Claude so that it could rewrite it for me, then grab it and insert it inside of my database. And instead of doing all this, we could just have an MCP scraper fetch for these websites, go inside of them, scrape everything, create the description that we want, and insert it all inside of the database. But there's a right way to do that. It really isn't just attaching the MCP and having Claude code do everything for you, since you might run out of tokens if you do that. There is a better way to do it, and I'll show you how in just a minute. First, let's install Firecrawl's MCP inside of our Cloud Code environment. Now, I'll show the process of installing it inside of Cloud Code, but if you wanted to install it inside of Cursor to use any of the LMs from Cursor, it should work pretty fine too. All you'd have to do is just click on this button, click to open up Cursor, and as soon as Cursor opens up, you just want to add your API key for Firecrawl in here and hit install. Since I'm installing it in Cloud Code, what I'll want to do is scroll all the way down here and install it using this command right here. Just copy that, you can paste it up here. I like to do that. Head over to Firecrawl's dashboard, grab your API key and replace it in here. Now grab that entire command, head back to your terminal, paste that in, hit enter, and it should be done. Now a detail about installing it like this is that every project that you use will always have access to this Firecrawl MCP. And also it's conditioned to work in your environment. Since I want more people from my organization to have access to Firecrawl's MCP, what I want to do is Claude MCP remove Firecrawl. This way it'll remove it from my local environment. And instead I'll run this command right here. It's the same command. The only thing it has different is this scope project flag. By the way, these notes right here will be in the description of the video as well. So don't worry. Just grab that command, paste it in there, hit enter, and a JSON file should be created with the Firecrawl MCP along with your Firecrawl API key. Now let's see how I can perform this for my specific project. Since I'm running Prisma, I can check out everything inside of my database here in the Prisma Studio. You'll see that for a benchmark table, I have a bunch of different rows with a lot of different benchmarks. And then for, let's say the arc benchmark, I can just select that row so I keep track of where I am. Then as soon as I scroll horizontally, I'll see that I have a description arc benchmark. Since this is just my local dashboard, I'll head over to my local project and visit benchmarks arc. You'll see that we get that same description. So arc benchmark, if I change anything in here and save that inside of my database, if I access it now and refresh the page, that is updated with whatever I wrote. So the idea is having Cloud Code use Firecrawl's MCP to populate all of the descriptions for the given benchmarks. And this is how I'll do it. So let's read through this prompt. Generate a script inside of a folder called data population. I like this approach since it keeps everything in a single place. In this case, in a single folder. And this is good for you to be organized and also for the LM to have full context of the feature that we're implementing. So whenever we're populating the database again with some other feature, it will look inside of this folder probably as it has the specific data population name and will spare us from using up a lot of tokens. This script should fetch for the benchmarks from the database and another script that is able to update the description of the given benchmark. So inside of this folder, we'll have a script to read the database and one script to update the database. 
And obviously we need to read the database to get the name of these benchmarks, but we also should be able to update it using a different script. Now, a lot of people would think that this is unnecessary since you could just ask Claude to look inside of your database using some kind of bash command. But every single time you have it do that, and probably it will do that in every context window that it starts. So let's suppose this is one context window, and then you ask for it to fetch database data. It has to understand, okay, where am I? I'm inside of an XJS project. How does it use the database? Then it identifies a Prisma. And then inside of that Prisma, it identifies that it has a specific table and everything. So the way that it finds out how to fetch inside of your database, if you were not specific about it, it will end up using a lot of your tokens, which is obviously an additional expense that we don't want to have. So just having a file that already reads what we want from the database, quite specifically for this case, is really important. And also because you might think that, well, I will only need one context window to resolve everything, but that's not true because you might end up wasting all your tokens in the middle of this. Maybe the context window won't be enough, or there could just be some kind of error that stops all of these 336 benchmark search. Finally, I add also it should generate a JSON in the same folder with the ID of the benchmark and its description. There's plenty of reasons for me to do this, but for this specific project, it's because I have a local database and a production database. I could just grab everything from the benchmark table and send it over to my production database, but instead I prefer to have a JSON file in here and have it populate both the local database as well as the production. Wow, this arrow is ugly. Okay, that's better. It's still ugly. Wait, uh, wait a bit. Okay, that's that's nice. Okay, that's good so far. Then after you create these, please use Firecrawl's MCP to search for the correct description of my benchmarks. Check the schema.prisma for benchmark table. Focus on an optimal SEO and make sure it does not have beyond 600 characters. Use neutral language as well. Then very important, give it an example of what you want. And finally, I want to test this at first with just three benchmarks for now. This is very important because again, you'll be testing this through 336 different benchmarks, and you don't want it to just scrape everything, lose all your tokens, and only at the end realize that the description isn't what you needed. So let's grab everything inside of this prompt. Let me run Claude dangerously skip permissions, and make sure you're on the computer while this is running. Not so much because of, well, well obvious security issues, but especially to ensure that Claude code doesn't just start looping to finish your task and waste all your tokens from either Firecrawl or from Cloud Code. So let's paste that in, hit enter, and see what it builds for us. Nice, so first thing it did is look inside of our schema.prisma. Now it created a data population folder. It built the fetch benchmarks JavaScript code here, and now the update benchmarks description script. Nice, as soon as it ran the script, we got all of the benchmarks listed here, and now it should use this JSON to then align with Firecrawl's MCP search for a description for each one of these benchmarks. Nice, so we got the issue that I wanted, which is large MCP response, 18,000 tokens. And why is this happening? What happens here is really simple. Firecrawl gets a specific benchmark name, in this case, MMLU. And this would happen even if you were to use the Cloud Codes browsing feature. So that's what I think is really special about using an MCP scraper like Firecrawl. Because here's what happens. You have this specific keyword, then it attaches with a description or some sort, and then it finds and browses for it. It's like a Google search. Then it finds website one, website two, website three. Then what it does is basically get all the content from that web page. And this is actually what Firecrawl is doing right now, since it first uses the search feature, finds that web page, grabs all the data from it, and then sends it over to Cloud Code. This ends up making us have something like 80,000 lines of text, which completely ruins our context window. And the solution for that is pretty simple. In the same in the same MCP page for Firecrawl, you can scroll all the way down to see the tools that are available. In there, you'll find the extract tool. Now, what does this extract tool do? It works in the middle of the process here. So instead of going directly over to Cloud Code, what it does is send all this content to Firecrawl. Then what Firecrawl does is get all of these 80,000 lines of text, extracts only what we want from it, so that we get fewer lines of text to be sent over to Claude code. 
And this way, we're not wasting all of Cloud Code's token. Now, obviously, these tokens have to be wasted somehow, since there is an AI processing all this on Firecrawl's end. So there is a cost to use this, but up to 500,000 tokens, it's completely free on Firecrawl's side. And you can check that right here in Firecrawl's extract pricing page. As much as I'd like you to subscribe using my link, so firecrawl.link slash Leo, feel free to test everything out before you make the purchase. Because honestly, before even testing this out, maybe 18 million tokens might not seem that much for $90 a month. But this right here is kind of an estimate of how many tokens I wasted to extract and get these benchmark descriptions that I'm looking for. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me actually ask Cloud Code to do that for us. And before I do that, let me show you the results we got. So it's exactly the description from the example that he gave it. And really just reading through it, it seems pretty nice. But Again, it wasted a lot of tokens to produce this. Let's now make sure that this doesn't happen again. So my prompt is just, okay, do it with three other benchmarks, but try to use Firecrawl's extract feature. Hit enter, and now it successfully uses Firecrawl to search for that specific benchmark, find those pages, find the URLs that make sense and has what we're searching for, and then it uses Firecrawl's extract to go inside of those URLs and retrieve for us just what we want. So you can see that inside of its fetch, it might come up with its own prompt. So here it is, extracts key information about the benchmark data set, including its name, size, purpose, key features, and evaluation metrics. Focus on what makes this benchmark unique and important. This is all really important to generate the final description. I just now realized that it created another JSON, which is the round two JSON, kind of dumb, but still it brought me the description that I want. So we kept the quality of the description. It did not use a lot of Cloud Code's tokens and still inside of Firecrawl, let me update this. These three right here were the fetches performed and these were the tokens wasted. So yeah, with 500,000 tokens, you could fetch for a lot of different things. Not fetch, but actually extract, which is much more powerful since you have an LLM intermediating everything. And since we had it populate the database, not only generate this JSON, it actually did so allowing us to get the benchmark ID, go locally search for it and have that description in here for an optimal SEO. By the way, I'm doing frequent live builds of this entire project inside of the AI Forge community. The idea is to actually show how you can build these kind of tools and websites by using, well, let's say vibe coding, but in the right way which actually leans more towards agentic coding. And if you still don't know the difference between these two, I made this video explaining vibe coding versus agentic coding. Feel free to check it out. And if this video helped you at all, feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Till then.